Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek Jain and welcome back to the tutorial series on Influx TB, which is a time series database. And this is part two and I would highly recommend you to watch part one if you are beginner to the Influx TB. If you already know the basic, then you can uh, watch this video because in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna write our Python client through which we gonna continuously fed the data to the Influx TB. Just to do a quick recap, uh, in part one, we just set up, you know, the Inflex DB with the Docker command, right? This is what the Docker command looked like. Uh, the username and password is different because uh, in today's video, I'm gonna use a different instance. Um, so this is not hold true. Um, so let me just quickly log in with, you know, the correct credentials. Okay, so we are there. Uh, so let's, okay. Now, uh, and then we saw that how we can manually enter the data with the help of a line protocol, right? So we know uh, manually we enter the data, but that is not gonna happen in real time because in real time, what we need is we need some kind of automatic automated way. Like if, I, if we have a application uh, where we want to capture, you know, the CPU and memory usage, we should be able to fit that data to the TB. And we're going to start writing a Python, cl Python client in today's video so that we will be knowing how we can directly, you know, load the data into the Influx TB, right? And apart from that, we just saw some UI option where we can just visualize the data, we can see different, different kinds of graphs and all those things. Right. So for agenda for today's video is just to write a simple Python code where we can continuously load the data, verify the data, and just see how we can visualize that on a FlexDB with the UI options which we have. Okay. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, I'm gonna use a Python client for InflexDB. Um, so I just created. I'm using a PyCharm as ideally for me. I created a uh, I created you know. Uh, the <coughs> project right. Uh, so as we know for any uh, Python client, we need, uh, you know, uh, the Python library. And in our case, uh, the Python library name is InflexDB dash client. Okay. And if you just click on this, it's already installed. <clears throat> but if you want to see, if you just come here, we have, you know, in the UI itself, we have a lot of, you know, uh, link available for client library, you can click on Python and you can just get to there, right? To get all the which I'm just explaining you now. Okay, so now we have uh, dependency installed. The next thing which you need is the API token, right? So nowadays, you know, uh, we are actually just using our API tokens, you know, to just get connected with the server, right? So if you just click on load data, the fifth option is the API token. If you just click on here, on the right side, you will see this generate API token, which has two options, all access API token, custom API token. I'm just gonna click on all API access token. You can see this warning, which says that if you are going to create all access, this is going to create update, delete, read and write anything in your organization. So you don't, you should not use it. You should always relying on the custom API token, right? Where you can uh, just define what kind of permission you want in various resources which you have like on bucket, you know, telegraphs and other resources, you have, right? I have already created that. So I'm not gonna create the new one, but you can just, if you want to create a new API token, this is how you can generate it. Now we are all set, we have a dependencies. We have our API tokens, right? So API token is nothing but it's just a long string with a lot of special characters, right? So what I have done is uh, I just created a config.py and I just created an inflix db underscore token and I just assigned that a string over there. So you can also do that. You can export your environmental variable uh, and then you need you can fetch that info in your Python client and that we're gonna see right now, okay. <laughs> Um, so before I do so, uh, the another thing which we need, we installed a uh, dependency, we got API token. The last thing which we need is dedicated bucket, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a new bucket. Again, same option, load data, come to the bucket, create bucket. Uh, we can say data from uh, app one, right? So I can say, don't delete, I'm just keeping retention level. Okay, so data from app one is my bucket where we're gonna put the data. Okay, so we are all set. Uh, so what we have done so far, uh, we install when dependency, you know, 
get the API token, you know, and then create a delicate bucket. That's it, right? So this seems like this is all we need uh, to just write our uh, Python client. Okay, so let me just create a new Python file here. Uh, send data to folks DB. Okay, so now what I need, uh, I just need uh, some imports. So I have already copied them. I have already written them, so I'm just copying here. Uh, I'm just, uh, I don't need OS for now because, okay, so here, if you just see this import, right? So what I'm doing is InfluxDB client, I'm just importing this InfluxDB client endpoint. These are the two classes which we're gonna see because we have to inst instantiate that. So this InfluxDB client is going to just give, give us a client object. This point is, you know, if you remember in the previous video, I explained InfluxDB uses a text format, which is called the line protocol. And this point is actually just a class which actually represents the line protocol. And we're going to see how we can define that because that is what. And as I mentioned, I have this variable InfluxDB token, which is actually have just my API token. You can also create yours. Okay, so I'm going to delete that anyways. So it's not something, you know, after this session, I'm going to delete that. Uh, this is just my local setup. So no one can access that. So you're good, even if it is visible, right? Okay, so now the next thing which you need is uh, your uh, bucket. So in bucket, as we created, um, what the name we have given, data from app one. Okay, so data one, this looks good. And then we need a ORG. What's my organization name? That's really important, you know? So I have to go to the repeat.md and what's my, okay. So I think it's magic Q, I guess. That's magic. Okay, so it should be magic. And then I just need a token. And for token, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set this. Okay, so this looks good. Now what I'm gonna do, uh, ah, one more thing, I need a URL. That's the most important thing I need to define. Okay, so my URL is straightforward, depends upon where you have exposed your Docker container port. Uh, I just uh, exposed on 8086, so URL bucket all is that. That's that, that's it, we are good. Now uh, to instantiate the client, uh, this is what you have to do. You have to use this InfluxDB class. Uh, just provide URL, token, and ORG for now. We are not using bucket. Bucket is going to be used when we are going to define and we are going to actually write this. Once we instantiate the client, right? Inside the client, if you see, we have inside the client module, we have this write uh, API, right? So now what we're going to do, uh, I'm just going to, okay, right. So in instantiation, right? client method, which is, in, which is in the client object, which we have defined previously with the help of URL token and ORG. And now here we are using right option is synchronous. Synchronous means if you feed the data until unless that's written, it's not going to take the another one. So we are not writing anything in any synchronous mode, right? So that's the reason we are saying uh, synchronous mode. Awesome. Uh, so once we have this, uh, we can quickly write something. And for writing data, in InfluxDB, we have to define line protocol, which we can define with the help of this point class, which we imported, right? So I have already written that. So if you see here, uh, what it needs, it's need, you know, first of all, uh, we have already, a, we have defined a bucket inside the bucket, we need a measurement. So in point, whatever you pass in, that is actually be considered as a measurement. Right, so this is what the measurement name gonna be. Then you are defining a tag. So I'm just keeping key value pair, whatever number of tags you want. I just want one tag where I'm saying, okay, key is location, value is Tokyo, which is my city. So right now what I'm trying to do, I'm just trying to you know capture the temperature for the city across the globe. So, and then field is temperature, uh, where I'm just giving setting a value, right? So tag is, which is not going to change frequently. Field is where you are actually going to get your frequently changed data. So I think we have all uh, information set up, uh, which we need. We instantiate our client. We 
just you know right off we set the right option for the right uh, api method we have our line protocol as well with one sample record uh, so now all we need is we have to just call. so what we're going to do now we're going to write the data okay so for this i'm going to call this write api okay so what this needs so it's take write method and here we're going to use bucket and in bucket, we're going to pass which bucket we want to write this. And then we have to give ORG as well. OK, and then record. In record, we have to pass this object, which is P. Right, so I mean, we can say record as well, just to have more meaningful name uh, to have consistency. OK, so we are good. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put this in the, try so that if something goes wrong then we should be able to see why it is we are good uh, so if i wouldn't make any mistake let's quickly run this data oh it says this bucket oh i think i just misspelled uh probably you guys would have noticed this just gave the wrong bucket name Cool. Uh, data from a AP one. It should be AP one. I should have copy paste that. Hmm. Oh no. Uh, let's see. What's the name? App one. Oh, cool. Sorry, I just made a lot of mistake. App one. Cool. Cool, uh, so we are good. Now we have just entered only one record, right? Rather than uh, entering one, what I want now is uh, I have I have written some code, which I'm just gonna copy paste. I'm going to replace this entire thing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, uh, let me just quickly explain what I'm trying to do here is, for you so that you will be knowing. Okay, uh, so let me just comment this out, okay. So I just generalized this uh, record, right? So what I'm doing, I'm just running in loop. Uh, 200 would be too much, uh, keep it five, uh, 10, right, for now, just to quickly check. So what I'm doing, uh, I'm just keeping measurement same uh, it's location but here if you just see i'm just using a random module to just get the location i'm just passing a list of locations where i have five different cities across the world and one of them is going to be picked up i don't know which one and then in field uh, for temperature i'm again using a random module and i'm just using a random function which actually just gives the value between from zero to one in a decibel format I'm multiplying by 100 so that I can get two, dis two digit integer as well with the decimal and I'm just rounding off with a two, right? So that we have some meaningful numbers. So this is just a nice. And if this going to be run in loop, it means that, you know, after, you know, every iteration, you know, one record is going to be inserted. Then I'm sleeping here in between five to 10, but just to keep it a bit faster, uh, let me keep it for, two second, one to two second, right? So either it should be one or two seconds delay. Um, so if everything is good, then we should see some data. P is not defined. Oh, cool. I just copy paste. That's the reason we should not do copy paste a lot. Okay. So we, uh, we should be good today. I just made a lot of mistakes, but fortunately, okay. Point is written, point is written. Now we can see whether this data is actually being uh, reflected. So I'm just clicking on Data Explorer, uh, data from API. Now we can see we have this measurement, you know, load from Python app. This is what the name which we have uh, given when we just created our record, right? Data load from Python app, cool. And then we have this field temperature. We can see in location, right, which is tag. And then we have five different cities, right? Click any one of them. Uh, and then here again, we can just choose this time range. Uh, just for one minute. Let's see. Okay. So, Beijing, we have some entries 
Delhi. Uh, let's see. Now we have two more entries at London. There's nothing. Uh, let's put, okay, New York. So now see, we are having a different, different numbers. Let's put this 15 minutes now. It's past five minutes, right? Uh, cool. Okay. Uh, there's something. Five minutes. Cool. Awesome. Uh, so let's play a little bit more and wait. Let's see what happens. Uh, let's come back here. Um, here in Data Explorer, as I mentioned, there are so many options. Whatever the graph based on your data points, you can just choose which one you want. In this table, uh, we can see how many entries we have, right? So we have two entries for Delhi, London one, New York one, Tokyo three, right? Okay, so this is how you can just get, see the raw values. Uh, you can create a scatter plot if you want. Uh, histogram, we can see the histogram, right? That's really awesome. Uh, you can heat map if you want to generate uh, graph we have already seen. And let's say in 15 minutes, cool. Okay, so if you want, you can just download this data into the CSV format as well. So let's click on this. We got the CSV data, query.csv. If I just open. Okay. This also looks good, right? So we have all the data, right? In the CSV format, if you want. So that's pretty much it, right? We are good. So now you can, this is how you can write to the InflixDB with the help of a Python code. Now, depending upon how, which, what kind of data you want, right? And what kind of data you want to load to the InflixDB. You can write some Python code, get the data, and put it on InflixDB. And then with the help of those options, which InflixDB provides, which is way easier, you don't have to, you know, integrate a lot of, uh, you know, data visualization tool. For example, if you are having a Prometheus, uh, then you have to use Grafana because Prometheus use graphs are not that uh, useful, right? Uh, so, um, so it's really good. I mean, in my opinion, you know, if you really want to uh, analyze something which is time dependent and you are getting a lot of data, you know, either in millisecond or microsecond, yeah, right? You should consider this in FlexDB. Try to just explore it and see if it fulfill your purpose or not, right? Um, so that's pretty much it, which I want to cover for this. Uh, in our next video, in we're gonna cover, I mean, how we can extract the data, which is already there in FlexDB with, you know, Flux, which is a, a replacement, not replacement, but which is, you know, can be used to overcome with the limitation of the inflex QL, right? So we're gonna cover that into the next section. So thanks for watching this. If you have any feedback or comment, just feel free to uh, you know put that into the comment section and I will just upload this code into the uh, GitHub repo so that if you want to refer that code, you can refer that. And if you have any suggestion or feedback, Feel free to put that into the comment section and I would love to answer your queries or I would love to implement your suggestions. Uh, so as always, stay healthy and keep learning new things.